Hello there, Sarah from 17 once again, introducing you to my Rage Nightmare Difficulty video walkthrough. This is the second part to the power plant, which is mission 20, and we're in a lovely elevator waiting for this dude to, to drop the hammer, so to speak, and uh, cut the cables. And you'll fall all the way to the bottom of the shaft, yes, that's a naughty word, and then you'll have to climb out. So it's all still very simple, there's going to be a, a hell of a lot more enemies from now on, you're going to be taking on thick and fast waves of dudes and then the third video in the, the sequence that is the power plant is going to be the boss fight which is very easy so don't worry there is nothing here that should really stop you just to save frequently you know use your cover to the best of your ability and just pick enemies off as patiently as you can and move forward it's that simple in the last video I was on about a pretty <laughs> pretty tough subject of killing children and then I went on to say how the news is very hypocritical when it comes to the media and when it comes to newspapers. So I'm going to finish off that topic very quickly and move on to something different. But first I'm going to take a lovely sip of water. Because talking to yourself at length is an extremely dry hobby. But news is hypocritical as anybody who pays attention will know and papers even more so. And I mentioned in the last video that bad news sells and that's why all these tragedies are shown in there and all that kind of stuff and there's always you know every page is just rape, pillage, plunder, death, decay, disease and just just constant nastiness that's always happening all over the world and a lot of it is pretty mundane in the grand scheme of things when you think about it cause somebody getting stabbed on you know stabbed in a, in a holiday park in, in the south of, of a small country is not quite the same as genocide in Africa or you know the, the mass atrocities that are happening in Burma but it still seems pretty bad because you can relate to it because it's in your area and you might have been to this place where it happened so it's that correlation that people can draw with it and, and that's what gives it the effect but the thing that really pisses me off but I keep saying but I'm not too sure why and I, I do understand why they do this the thing that gets me is every single time you have these pages filled with you know 16 year old girl goes to, to Ghana in India with her mother she's having the time of her life then the next day they find her on the beach she's been gang raped and she's drowned in the, in the riptide and it's always a, a tragic and awful occurrence and then on the next page, bang next to this story with all this emotional weight, is, you know, Jolly the Otter found playing chess with her master. Isn't she so cute? And it's a picture of an otter on a ball balancing playing chess. And the thing that gets me is it's like we've just hit you with this massive emotional piece, but here's this absolute, complete, pointless fucking drivel, laugh at this and feel better. And you, you'll see it all the way through the magazines and all the way through the papers. It's always very, very strict, stern, emotionally, you know, just demoralizing story. Then on the next page, something to make you feel better about yourself because it's, you know, unfortunate pictures of celebs. Here's this, here's Britney Spears' arm fat and back fat and she's wearing no shoes and toilet. And it's, it's all these things everyone's like, ha ha ha, that's funny, let's laugh at that. Then on the next page, you know, seven children get maimed in a bomb that goes off in Iraq. It kills two US, sol US soldiers and uh, one, you know, English gunner or something daft. And it's always like, that's, that's really sad, that sucks. And then the next page, there's a fucking crossword. And it's just this juxtaposition of, of sorrow and stupidness and it sells because psychologically it's it's these peaks and valleys that get people reading through the papers and it all depends on your flavor and your tastes of poisons but it, I just find it so strange and there's a lot of people that might be saying dude you're just completely over analyzing it and maybe I do because that's just how I'm designed but I just find it so strange we're such a strange fucking race of people I mean it's just madness and when you've seen a woman stick a baseball bat in her ass, you know that we're pretty much fucked and we'll never get better. You just have to, you know, roll with the punches. <laughs> but, swiftly moving on, I watched Captain America last night and I don't think I've spoke about it yet. So this is going to be a perfect opportunity too because I have another seven minutes of this video and there's no real strategy to divulge other than don't get shot, don't die and win. Which you're all probably thinking, yep, yeah, we get that dude, we came for this for information, we came for this for help, and all you're doing is talking about random bullshit. This game is easy, you'll do it, I believe in you. So Captain America, if anybody don't, don't, if anybody don't know, because I'm cool, I'm all hip in the hood and what have you. Now if anybody doesn't know, it is obviously, I think, a Marvel comic that they've, they've, revamped from its <laughs> it's like late 80s original version where it was just a dude in spandex running around throwing a shield at people and then running and picking it back up <laughs> if you've never seen the original Captain America 
is a pile of shit. I used to love it when I was a child, which automatically tells me it's probably a piece of shit because I used to like Steven Seagal. But <laughs> the new one is a fantastic film. I liked it a lot. It's two hours long. I don't know the director. I'm not sure of the guy who plays the main character, but he's, he's been in Sunshine. He's been in Losers. He's been in a, a Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, and he's a fantastic actor. He's a real good actor, and it's nice to see him getting some leading roles because the guy's a beast. He's also buffed out like a boss. The guy's ripped as hell. He's chiselled, he looks sculptured, and uh, I would I would probably kiss him because he looks that damn awesome. And, you know, if he'd done the entire film without his shirt on, I wouldn't have complained because the guy's rocking some major guns. And the, the thing I liked most about it is it's really unconventional. And you're probably thinking, what's unconventional about a superhero film? They've been doing them for years and they all generally suck dick, aside from maybe Iron Man and the, the new Batmans and some of the old Batmans. Well, I can completely agree with that opinion and that jaded look on the, the comic book genre of films, but this one, it's it's just its pacing and its structure. It isn't A, B, C, D. It's kind of like C, B, D, A. It's, it's real good in how they've done it. And the thing I like about it is it doesn't follow the, the cliched tropes of the direction I thought it was going. And to me, that is the best kind of filmmaking. When I think something's going to do something and it doesn't do it, that is always a blessing because I'm, I'm kind of jaded on films because I've seen so many and because I study them, it's one of those things where it can sometimes be hard to sit down and enjoy them. And this film I sat down and I enjoyed. What I will say is the first 30 minutes of it I absolutely fucking hated. And it's nothing to do with the film, it's nothing to do with the writing or the events that happened. It's to do with this vain, ridiculous notion of CGI effects that they laden into all films these days and it completely takes away what I enjoy about movies and and what the crime is in, in question in most films when you have an actor that goes through separate you know transformations they generally use a different actor for instance if you've got a 16 year old version of your protagonist he is a different actor to the 30 year old version of your protagonist you see the equation gets complicated because what happens is the main character gets injected with the super soldier serum which turns him into a massive buff awesome soldier dude which is Captain America before this though he's a really short really skinny really pathetic guy and I can kinda understand because he doesn't change age in this process it's just an injection that turns him ripped and awesome but instead of having a different actor to, to portray him as you know this really skinny pathetic dude They've used a real skinny, pathetic dude, and they've stuck his head on with CGI. And I don't know if anybody have seen that that YouTube video, that human face on that dog, but that's kind of what it looks like. And I spent the entire start of this film with my hands on my face just going, Why? Just why? Because I, I couldn't watch the film. I was too busy looking at how fucking bad these effects were, and how much it was pulling me out of the movie. And, I, and God, I hated it. I, w I was white with rage. See what I did there? See what I did? <laughs> I, I was super angry because it's, it's just not necessary. Just have a different actor. The guy's just been injected with super serum. He went in a massive cauldron. He could have come out looking like fucking Burt Lancaster for all I cared. Just as long as there's none of these awful effects. And it all stems from Terminator Salvation. That's when I fucking blame it on. Because when Arnie, Arnie came out of that bloody machine and they CGI'd his face on and he looked like a boiled egg. It was just like, really? Are you really going to do this? And then ten seconds later they set his face on fire because they realised how bad the effect looked and they just fucked it out the window, which was the best thing they could have ever done. And for whatever reason, people in Hollywood thought, yeah, that's a great idea, we're going to start adopting this as a trend. So Tron Legacy came along, and at the start of the film you don't see Jeff Bridges from, you know, point of view or even a, a close-up of him whatsoever, and I'm kind of thinking, what the hell was this director playing at? You these angles are horrific, what's going on here? And it turns out, he isn't even real! <laughs> and I was wondering why he looked so smooth, and then when you finally see it, it's like, Jesus Christ, that dude's completely CG! And it's awful! It's, it's, it's ridiculous! It's just pathetic! And it ruins the films! And the first 25 minutes of... of of the first Avenger, which is the Team America movie, is, her is awful. It's horrible. Everything else is beautiful. The main character, fucking awful. Hated every second of it. As soon as he turns into Team America, I'm back on the bandwagon. I've got a big old smile on my face and I'm enjoying things again. 
and it throws a couple of really interesting segues in it, a little couple of distractions where you think it's going to go one way and it doesn't and it surprises you but the best thing about it, which I'm not going to spoil because this film is relatively new and there's a lot of you that might not have seen it, is the ending because something happens, I don't know if it's what happened in the comic or what, but there is an occurrence that takes place and you're kind of thinking, is this really going to do what it's about to do? And it does! And it's perfect because it's not all smiles, it's not all, you saved the day Captain America, fuck yeah, let's wave this American flag! It's none of that. It is the biggest, you know, middle finger of an ending since, well, in a comic book film, I'm, I'm not saying this compares to Seven or Saw or anything like that, but it's just so different and so against the grain that I loved it. And it's set it up for possible sequels and the Avenger movie that's coming, but it just did what I didn't think it was going to do. I thought it was going to be, you know, a lot of kids come, he picks one up, he looks into the camera like Rocky IV and he's like, Yeah, we did it, Adrian! I thought it was just going to be some dumb, bullshit cop-out ending. And it was terrific. I loved it. So, it comes from high regards from me. Check it out. It's a, it's a fantastic film. And Hugo Weaving, man. I don't even have to say anything more. Hugo Weaving. What a guy. What an actor. I love him. So we're coming up to the end of the video here. This is going to be where the boss area is because we'll move through this next room and up these stairs that we're about to come to. Not quite yet is the boss. But don't worry, he's just a normal dude. I'll shoot him in the face a couple of times and he'll fall on his back. But thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video and you take care now.